Welcome to Killer Women with your host, best-selling author, Danielle Girard. And now, Danielle's next killer woman. Welcome to Killer Women Podcast, a proud member of the Authors on the Air Global Network with more than 4 million listeners. I am your host, suspense author Danielle Girard, and my guest today is Heather Chavez. Heather is a graduate of the University of Berkeley's English Literature Program and has worked as a newspaper reporter, editor, contributor to mystery and television blogs, and in communications. She lives with her family and two cat overlords in Santa Rosa, California, where she is at work on her next novel. Her titles include No Bad Deed, Blood Will Tell, and Before She Finds Me. Ooh, look at that gorgeous cover. We have a coaster today because um, we are at the Thriller Fest <laughs> conference in New York yeah. and we don't haul our own books to conferences yeah. because we're going to take a lot of books home. That aren't exactly. Ours. Exactly. Okay, well, welcome, Heather. Thank you. Um, will you tell our listeners about Before She Finds Me? Sure. Um, it is a uh, kind of cat and mouse thriller told from dual points of view with we have Julia who's a mom sending her daughter to college um, and then we have the pregnant assassin Ren and um, there's this horrific attack in the beginning of the book and it's only Julia's very quick thinking that prevents her daughter from you know having more significant harm and um, so of course then she has to get to the bottom of what happened and why it happened and at the same time Ren um, her husband is the one who, who committed the crime and which goes against everything that they have established in their professional relationship, as well as in their marriage, where, you know, he kind of secures the jobs, but she does all the planning she's very meticulous and she does the planning. And so, but she knew nothing about this attack. So it's kind of like they're both trying to get to the bottom of what it was that happened. Was it random? Who paid him? Um, that kind of thing. And um, of course, it puts them at odds with one another, but also on track to collide. <laughs> yes, exactly. It creates a really good tension in the story. So one of the things that, that I found really fascinating about this story is the use of plants, right? Mm -hmm. um, Ren as an assassin uses, um, you know, toxins from plants to do her dirty work. And, but um, but Julia is also a really incredible mm -hmm. green thumb. And actually, it's her knowledge of plants that gives some really cool clues mm -hmm. about what might have happened um, during the story. And I won't give too much away, but tell us, because you mentioned that you're kind of not a green thumb. <laughs> so yeah. what was, so where did that idea come from? And then how did you do the research? For that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because my, one of my good friends moved um, out of the area and she gifted me her ficus. And it was like, okay, this beautiful tree. She goes, I left it outside. I've had it for 20 years. No one can kill this plant. Yeah. Yeah. No she one but you. didn't know me well enough, apparently. <laughs> and so I, yeah, it died. I tried to take care of it. I probably overloved it. Yeah. You know, that's probably what I did. I, I overwatered. Overwater, right. Overwatered and like, oh, I'm going to move it here. Is this a better spot? Yeah. So it died. Um, and so I ended up replacing it with a fake, <laughs> fake, fake standing plant. Um, <laughs> And that works for me. Yeah, it works for me. It's hard to so, kill those. Yeah, it really it's really is. hard to kill those. And how um, the plant kind of, uh, I was going to say the idea germinated, but you know. Yeah, there you go. Hey, Julia. Done. Yeah. Have fun for Julia's <laughs> sake. Um, but how the idea came to be was that, um, you know, I was moving my daughter into college and that's how Julia's right. um, um, point of view, that first scene yes. really came into focus. But I didn't have her foil yet. And I knew I wanted to have a foil for her. I wanted to have a dual point of view. Yes. I wanted, but I didn't have anyone that I considered interesting or worthy enough for mm -hmm. her. And then I was um, interviewing for my day job, a, a woman who had um, a partner who cloned carnivorous plants. I love that. And so, and she was also pregnant. And so it was kind of like the, it just, got into my subconscious right and then I ended up um just going with it you know and and that's how it came to be but of course I knew nothing right nothing. and you do it's a really good research nothing. I mean I don't yeah you, know, it's, you, you do just give us just enough to be really like oh that's yeah. I didn't know about that and then um but you, it seemed like you knew what you're talking about 
Yeah, that's because other people do. Yes, that's that's how um, it works, right? Yeah, one, gotta... of, one of the non-spoilerly <laughs> clues that you mentioned, um, there is a clue that is directly related to Julia's knowledge of plants. Yes. And that one, actually, I had like, hey, what if we did this? And I actually reached out to the partner of this oh, yeah. woman that I worked with yeah. and, um, and asked, hey, how does this sound? And he goes, well, you know, what if this instead? And um, if, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so much better. Yeah. Because what I was thinking, like, okay, there's something. Right. And it was like, no, 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 that doesn't Right. Work. It's about a plant getting bumped. And there's yeah. like a very specific thing that happens this type of plant, which is like, yeah. and Julian notices it, which I found really, really fascinating. Yeah. Um, and it's, I mean, that is exactly, and Julia yeah. is the kind of person who would notice that. Right, right. One, right. because of her love of plants, but also because of her her background and her, her personal story, which you do a beautiful job mm -hmm. of giving her the right motivations to be the kind of person that she is, yeah. right? It was a, her, her experiences was super tough. So um, I love the idea that in this, first of all, I love that there's two women here. There's two very strong women who are, of course, at odds because they have different agendas, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very, very different good. agendas. Um, but these are two really, you know, strong women. Did one of them um, emerge? I mean, so it sounds like Julia emerged for you first mm -hmm. and then ran it or developed her. So it's sort of one of the themes of the book is about how sort of our past mm -hmm. violence in our past in particular sort of, or in this book, in, in this case anyway, forms us. And is that something that sort of is something that you're thinking about as you're writing the book and, and how did that come to you? Yeah, it is. And I think, I mean, we work through our own you know, pasts, I think a lot. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that recurs, it also was in Blood Will Tell, is my relationship with my sister who's no longer with us. So and, um, you know, just we had similar growing up mm -hmm. stories, but we went in different directions. And that's kind of the thing that has always appealed to me to explore is, you know, if people have similar, you know, backstories, how do they turn into different people. And Julian and Ren are very, very different, but they both had past trauma. Yeah. Um, they both have kind of complicated relationships with their families. Yeah. Um, and so it's, you, it, it, they kind of work through it in very, very different ways. They also have both have an interest in plants. You know, Julia's a botany professor. Yeah. And uh, Ren <laughs> kills people with poison. Right. So very, very different, but they both really appreciate botany and flowers and plants yeah and, um and so finding that common thread between them and also how different it manifests on based on who they are as as people and yeah. how they develop and how and what their family i mean yeah so you know julia lost her parents mm -hmm. um and but brennan lost her mom yeah. um and so it is um we're gonna hear the vacuum now <laughs> we're in a hotel and we're gonna like oh they're vacuuming somewhere nearby um oh, well okay so the, the, we'll just ignore the vacuum but um to that point also I thought it was really interesting these are both moms yeah I mean it's sort of different I mean you you're a mom I'm a mom um we have actually similar aged kids and that really I mean that's a huge mm -hmm. that changes things now Julia already ha you know she already obviously has raised a daughter who's going to college and Ren is just starting this journey. But there is something also very, from that, from the moment you're pregnant, you and I both mm -hmm. know this, there's something very sort of protective and about that right. baby. So was, you know, is that something you also explore? I don't, I'm, I'm, this is my first Heather Chavez book. So <laughs> is that, is this, a, is this something yeah. that you also explore? You know, I, I do. And I actually am often inspired by incidents that happen with my children. Sure. It, you know, no bad deeds started with, I was taking my daughter, picking my daughter up from school and yeah. we saw this attack on um, two boys jumped another boy oh. right in front of us. And there was that whole, what do I do? My right. daughter's in the car. How do I keep her safe while also being a responsible, ethical human being? Right. Um, and while I was in that split second trying to make that decision, it they scattered and it was over. And but of course that stuck with me because it was all about how do I keep my daughter safe? Mm -hmm. But these, I mean, when I'm talking boys, I'm talking, they were maybe 13, Yeah, you know, they weren't um, adults. Right. And so how do I, 
what is my responsibility to other people's children right. and my own right. and my own safety right. and, and also what does that look like and then of course the thriller brain in me would uh, pivot to what happened before right. that moment right. what, and it, because of course that always occurs to me as well um and then this one before she finds me like i said moving my daughter into college and i'm thinking oh my gosh i mean she's so independent but it's the first time she'll be a whole day's drive away from me. Yeah. And that was really traumatic. And, yeah. but also I was very excited and thrilled for her too. Of course. Um, and so there was that whole launching and I, of course, being my brain as a mom and a thriller writer, right. what's the scariest thing? What's right? the scariest thing totally. that can happen? Worst case yeah. scenario thinking, yeah. I call that. I think that's so true. Yeah. Well, and it is, there's like, it is really yeah. interesting because there is this sort of, that it is this visceral reaction to watching, you know, especially I think violence on mm -hmm. other on young people mm -hmm. that we then sort of like, it's like, we don't want to, obviously, the, the priority is your own kid first, right? right? You have yeah. to, that's what we all do. And that's, that's understandable. But then of course, like, you're like, that's somebody's kid. Mm -hmm. And he's clearly, you know, it, it's been violent, it's been violent against him. So yeah, it's a really, it's an interesting push pull. Like, yeah. there's no really, once you have a baby, there's no kind of separating yourself from no. that reality ever. Yeah. No, I mean, my my son's 25 and he's living in a different state, living his own life, fully adulted. And still, I, you know, like, oh, hope he's okay. How'd that test go? Right. <laughs> you know, um, so it's, it's, it never does end. Mm -hmm. And especially with the big issues and with the way our world could be. Oh, uh, that's exactly you right. Know? And our that's world's hard. It's hard. And, and some of what um, I was doing, I mean, obviously it is a thriller, but I also, you know, there are always deeper issues in thrillers. Yes. And well, the best ones. The, yeah. That's yeah. what I love about thrillers. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, and I like to think, I mean, I, of course, I'm, I focus on women because yeah. it's killer women, but I do think that there's something, I think that's wonderful to read about things that feel really true to me, even though, of course, mm -hmm. I mean, none of this terrible stuff is happening to me, mm -hmm. you know, which is knock on some wood. Anyway, I'll find some, but, um, but it feels like it's just a really, um, those issues at home because we can all, I think that, mm -hmm. the other thing that happens with motherhood is you start to have these like horrible scenarios in your brain about things that can go wrong, right. which I don't feel like I had them the same way before I had kids. Yeah, no, it's different. I, I think, um, what's that saying about how it's like letting your heart live outside your yeah, body. Yeah. And that's exactly what it is because you are so much more concerned about protecting that heart. Yeah. And at the same time, you have so much less control. So over it. much less. So control. it makes you crazy. It makes you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and it yeah. does. It makes you crazy. Um, and even though I'm very, you know, I am, I am, I am pretty permissive as far as like trying to respect them as individuals yeah. and people yeah. and let them live their lives and not the life I want for them. Right. And it's so it's it's you know, being that striking that balance between guiding them but not over protecting them right. and also launching right. them yeah. but being a safe space right. for them and so it's hard it's oh hard and especially in the world like my daughter was living in LA by herself I mean not which she had a roommate yeah but um you know and that was something that it was like I'm so incredibly proud she started a band yeah she's um you know she is living her full life um and to let her do that yeah you know be that person um it, you know it's hard yeah it's hard as a parent but it's also so exciting yeah you know to, exactly to it's, watch it's, it well and I think that's probably that at the very basic level it's mm -hmm. just feeling two really distinct emotions at the same time <laughs> right yeah. it's like yeah uh, you know unrelenting joy and unrelenting terror kind of right that's We're, it that's parenting yeah. that's parenting <laughs> welcome to our parenting exactly podcast. i know there you go so <laughs> we do talk a lot about children in this podcast i don't know if that's probably that's me but okay so we were before we even started on air we were talking a little bit about like some experience you had um mm -hmm. and i wanted to talk about sort of your process i know we, you talked about the fact that you're not somebody who has like a million ideas mm -hmm. are you um do, are you, you know there's a plotter the pantser tell us a little bit about sort of how 
stories evolve for you? Um, I am firmly a plotter. I, I started out, you know, trying to be more discovery writing, you know, when I was in my 20s and uh, just kind of starting with an idea and running with it. And that didn't really work for me. I know it does work for a lot of people, didn't work for me at all. And I found throughout the process that the more outlining I did, the more comfortable I did writing yeah and you know yeah I, I mean yeah and especially because I do like my books to be layered and yeah. so and a lot of that does happen in editing to be honest but also I do like to have a roadmap and like I compare it to like okay maybe I will go off and take a side street or detour, but I'll still end up in the same place. Mm -hmm. um, and like with uh, Before She Finds Me, when I had the original idea, there were two, two parts that came to me almost instantaneously once all the pieces came together. And that was the opening mm -hmm. and then the climax. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, okay, and how do we get from- Yeah, you have you the bookends. Yeah, well, that's yeah. good, right? Yeah, and so that finding that path, like, okay, well, and especially because Ren is a different character than I've written. Yeah. Um, in that she is a pregnant assassin and I am not. <laughs> so it was- what? Like, yeah, you know, I know. So oh, this, That'd be a great reveal. Yeah. And guess what? I'm a pregnant assassin. <laughs> and, then, and then the screen would have to go dark because I would probably have to die before this thing hit it. I know. And oh no. But um, yeah, so it was exploring that other person who mm. was not me was also very, very interesting. Um, but yeah, no, I'm definitely a, a planner and- that doesn't mean I don't take detours. Like, yeah. for instance, in No Bad Deed, um, there's a minor character named Daryl and his accident prone Labrador, um, who is, we're supposed to be in a scene. And um, they are in the book. Yeah. <laughs> because, they, like, oh, I kind of want to live with Daryl and Lester a little bit longer. Yes. And so things do happen. I yeah. do allow myself that freedom of discovery because I feel like even if I do character prep and do enneagrams and all that right. things to explore them, I don't really know them until I see how they react. Exactly. That's exactly so. right. I think that's how you get a really like authentic kind of um, character development mm -hmm. is, is that way. But yeah. um, so then the other thing um, we were talking about is sort of like the ideas. Like, oh, um, yeah. so ta tell us about that. Cause that, <laughs> and then tell us about your experience. Cause that, yeah. I think for, for people who are, you know, at publishing or aspiring to be published this is very real stuff that happened oh, yeah it was um i yeah I, I i like to say that for book one i found my voice book two i found my process <laughs> and book three i found my joy oh. and it's really let's focus on that process <laughs> um because i think that's one thing that um especially if you're an emerging writer and you're you know you have that first book and you can live with it as long as you want you can yes. set it aside for a year when your son is graduating for instance um, <laughs> as an example know, as an example you know uh, you don't have to lock yourself in the you know spare bedroom or on the dining room table or whatever you have freedom of time mm -hmm. and choice mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden book two is a whole nother animal. And it's like you all of a sudden have to really fine tune what does work for you. You know, are you a pantser? Are you a plotter? How much detail do you need? How much time do you have to explore versus, you know, like with, you know, maybe you don't have time to do seven drafts. Maybe you only have time to do a few drafts right. um, before you turn it into your editor and then you'll do a few more. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, yeah. Um, so with book two, I actually wrote a completely different book and then um ended up submitting it and then it was like oh i don't think this is this is where we want to go um the can heart, you imagine you're yeah. like oh huh? yeah, this is the yeah. only book i've written <laughs> i know and like you said one idea at a time and so when i talked to my editor and we decided to go in a different direction with the plot um we stayed with the central theme and the relationship of the sisters because that was important but i I think I logged like 28,000 steps that day just because I'm like, I have to walk. I have to walk and force an idea. And forcing an idea, it, mm. it did not happen in a day or two mm. days or even a week. Um, I do have an idea jar that's like a cookie jar with oh. a T-Rex that I put 
because they don't come very often, like whether it's a name or a location or just a plot point, yeah. I'll throw it in the cookie jar because I'm like, okay, you might need, I might, I'm definitely going to need this. Was that something that developed after book two? Um, it was during book two. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) It was during book two because all of a sudden I did not have, I was like, okay, let me think of this. I I have one idea and I, I embrace it passionately. And so to come up with, um, you know, another one was, was very challenging. I actually yeah. wrote a writer's digest article that starts with, I hope I say this my, you know, book two kicked my ass because it, yeah, did. it did, you know, just going through that process, but it was also so in some ways, so such a growth experience Yeah, because the worst that happened, Hey, my editor doesn't love my book. Right. Happened. Yeah. And I knew and you that, survived it. And I survived it. Yeah. And I knew that, like I said, I found my process. I found what works for me and how to pivot. And yeah. um, and it was it was great. I, I think I and then like I said, then starting book three, I knew what worked for me and what didn't. Yeah. I knew I knew what I needed to do to um find my joy. Which is, I mean, that's exactly <laughs> right. I mean, I think that's and and there's so much that can happen that's unexpected in this business. And Mm -hmm. that's kind of the the sort of like, that's about the, one of the worst, right? It's like, you're like, I feel really good about this book. And the editor says, this isn't really working for me. And you're like, wow, where do we go from here? I know. Yeah. But you did it. I I I did it. And that's the benefit of having also, um, not only a very brilliant editorial agent, but also a very brilliant editorial editor nice. um yeah. and you know with before she finds me you know the the having that sounding board and that relationship to yeah. like explore different um facets to the characters and the story and layering like I love layering um yeah. you know my first drafts are just I don't want to say they're a dumpster fire but they're dumpster You fire. just throw them all in there and then well, you like kind of call things out. Yeah, there well, there are parts that I, I do polish, but I learned that from book. Well, like I said, it's a learning process, right? And I realized that even as much as I plot, I will change things. And so if I spend too much time polishing and editing something that I ultimately cut, mm-hmm. I don't really have the time for that anymore. Mm-hmm. So my my first drafts are generally built on plots. Mm-hmm. And then I go back and I layer in the emotions. And I, I mean, I, I do do some of that. In yeah, the first draft. but you kind of like, yeah. but I, I do kind of figure out. out like motivations. And is mm-hmm. this really how this person would do this? And, and does this make sense mm-hmm. from, you know, and is the timeline working and all the, the logistics of putting together a story mm-hmm. um, and figuring out which tangents I'm going to explore, um, where I'm going to veer off the outline. Yeah. No, that so. makes, um, I mean, I think that's, it's like you said, there's a, there's a, there's a perfectionism that we can get to mm-hmm. towards the end, yeah. but if you get to it too soon, you spend a lot of time perfecting something right. that may not make the final cut. Right. So I'm curious, do you underwrite or overwrite? I'm a total overwriter. See, yeah, that, I think that'd be so much easier. Oh, I don't <laughs> know. I don't know. Try. Yeah. I mean, that is the idea. I, but I, but then you, you, you know, oftentimes I need to cut, you know, I need to cut 20, 15, 20,000 words. Oh yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. And sometimes I, it's, I mean, I'm a good, yeah. I'm getting good at killing my darlings, but it's still hard. There's still stuff I think, well, I have to lose this whole like, lo- you know, line because mm-hmm. it's just not room. Mm-hmm. So I, that is a problem. And I would like to, I'd love to come in at like 85,000 words. And yeah. instead my and it, first drafts are like always 110. That's so funny because my first drafts are in the seventies. Oh, wow. And then, um, you know, regardless, I even went back because I'm having, I'm doing a draft now. Yeah. Like book four. And um, I had to go back and I looked at my first drafts to say, well, this is feeling short. And then I'm looking like, yeah, that's because you write short first drafts. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you that's, work. It works. And, but it's funny because um, before she finds me in, in revisions, I was like, but it must have started higher because it at one time was 108. Yeah. Which is, and so Wrong. I didn't cut. Right. And it, you're right. That's hard too. It's yeah. hard. It's all hard. <laughs> Right. What's the easy part? What's yeah. the easy part? The easy part is when you get to like show off your beautiful cover. Yes. I love and you that get to cover. go to Thriller Fest. And you get to go to Thriller Fest with all your friends. And I love the smoke, like, you know, or a yeah. little like that. This is a really beautiful cover. Actually, all of your covers are really fantastic. They do a great job. I love this. Okay. So you're dra- drafting. So can you, is it, can you tell us anything about this 
book yeah. in process? Yeah, it's um, well, it's a standalone mm -hmm. thriller again, um, and it because it's a Heather Thomas book, um, it has three strong points of view. I don't know if there will stay three. Yeah, that's so right. So maybe too much. Right. You know, this is like I said, the the dumpster fire draft. Um, but it is set in the Sierra Nevada foothills during wildfire season. Oh, and um, so there are family secrets, and of course, no one's being completely honest because it's a thriller. Exactly, that's what they it's, do. Exactly, they have, so they have to yeah. be lies, deceit, betrayal, yeah, murder. Um, yeah, there's all that. There's all that, <laughs> and I love. That. And actually, that's a real thing. Like you're in Santa Rosa, mm -hmm. that's um you guys deal with yeah. the fire stuff is scary yeah no we, like i said i do pull from everything yeah. to some degree yeah like for instance with before she finds me i did actually i used to live in southern california that's where i grew up and my daughter like i said went there and so i figured there wasn't enough market for a pregnant assassin where i live so i went to i'm sure southern california it's a big place of course There's um, definitely, yeah. yeah so i draw on my personal experiences and with uh book four um which is tentatively called fire book now but we'll have <laughs> but we I'm guessing are, that covered that will not know, stay we are brainstorming titles now, fire, fire book, book or untitled <laughs> i mean they're both yeah. really great they're titles. great titles um but it, it it kind of was the book i've wanted to tell since um santa rosa where i live was um you know really hit hard by a fire a wildfire in 2017 yeah the tubs fire and um and we've had multiple scares i mean where i live i've been evacuated <sighs> you know not this not last year so that was the first year in a while that i hadn't been evacuated and so it's so hard it's been yeah it's been this this like i've wanted to tell the story yeah um and it's um but it's never been i mentioned it a little bit in no bad deed because i'd finished the draft oh. and then suddenly wow these areas i mentioned were decimated by fire yeah so i had to go back and kind of just tweak but it not it did not touch really on the fire itself yeah yeah but for this book i i did want to explore that finally i thought okay there i have enough distance from it yeah um but it's also like drawing on what it was like in that moment. And that's another vulnerability. Like you yeah. have to really distance yourself from your possessions, which is something yeah. we're not that good at, especially as Americans, right? We're like mm -hmm. our home, our photo albums or whatever. Right. It's really hard to be like, how it do is. we, it is. I mean, you must have a list of things you take when you get ready to evacuate. We actually have a fire closet by the front door. Yeah. yeah. Because that's, we, but we didn't in 2017. Yeah. That was the first year. And it was so, it was so funny what we all chose to take. Yeah. Because my son had moved out by then. He was actually due to visit. Like, and we had to like, okay, you can't come. Yeah. <laughs> There's a fire. Um, but the with my daughter was still living at home and yeah. it was me um and my husband and my daughter and so we each grabbed different things of course and because it's the first time my husband grabbed a basket of laundry dirty oh. laundry because he figured these are the clothes he wears oh. he needed to be sure That's that hilarious. he was clothed yeah my daughter grabbed her favorite pair of jeans yeah and her brother's football jersey oh because it's like okay <laughs> that's what was in her moment in that moment um and then of course i grabbed the photos and the passports and right. the birth certificates smart <laughs> i think mom's got it you know dirty so, laundry is good but let's be honest we need so um, yeah yeah so it, was, it yeah, is it was, interesting it's different like our different like you know, my daughter's was very much a sentimental reaction yeah. and my husband's very practical and mine was very like, these are irreplaceable documents right. I need to, yeah. I need to make sure. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah. We got, we had a vacuum where I'm in Montana and we also had a really big fire, um, I guess in 2019. And um, I had to, my husband was traveling and mm -hmm. my kids were both, you know, in college by then. So I was, I did it by myself and it was like really overwhelming. Cause in, oh, yeah. in addition to that, you've got, I had dogs. So oh, you had yeah. to figure out how to get the animals out and it was, um, and it all was fine. But I, I ended up loading up my car twice <laughs> in this like week long period. And I was like, cause you can't really haul that stuff around when you go to, you know, to the grocery store, but then you gotta like pack it back up again. Anyway, it came to nothing, but I appreciate yeah. having done that uh what i also appreciate the idea of a fire closet that might be a thing <laughs> or at least a list like yeah. you know here's your list if you're yeah. gonna have to 
Because, I mean, you didn't have very much time. No, we didn't have that much time. And we were fortunate that we weren't right in, like, it stopped. I think it ended up burning, like, about a mile from our house. Yeah. So close, but not. But they can go yeah. fast. It, this one went really, really fast. Because the winds get going. Yeah. And then it is. Yeah. So you're not talking about, like, you don't have, like, five hours. You've got, like. You've got, you've, it's, yeah, it, it happened very, very quickly. And, yeah. you know, the, um some of the areas where where that were affected there's a road in and out and you know it's it's a challenge you're getting everybody on that road at yeah. the same time right it's yeah it was it was and you want to take all yeah. your cars because you want to get you know that's what we've actually had that conversation it's like I, and and now we've agreed i'm taking we're taking one car just so you're all together because the first time we did we all took our cars and then we're thinking boy this is not helping <laughs> this is right you know exactly um if everyone's gonna get out you need right. to have been as few vehicles as yeah. possible yeah that's a very so, good point yeah so it's god what a, yeah well i fire book i mean fire you book. guys that's like the best <laughs> title you've ever heard or what yeah well that's actually yeah. exciting and so do we have a kind of ish public pub date for that one we don't we are um because it's so handwritten but it, it should be I'm, i mean the the plan is to edit it this summer i'm thinking i'm i'm thinking it'll be next year yeah Perfect. um so 2024 2024 yeah. i'm hoping yeah i mean it depends i of mean course. yes it always depends it always but, depends yeah everything yeah. always depends on yeah. and so much so. so much well that is really exciting so the look for fire book Heather Chavez in 2024. It will have a different title, but there'll probably be fire on it. The cover. I bet they yeah, did something fabulous know. with that. I, I, they they did they knocked it out of the park. And it's so funny because I had a visual of like the cover for Before She Finds Me, and I thought, oh, it's definitely gonna have plants on it. I mean, it's plants. Um, there's a lot of plant imagery in it, but they went in this other direction, yeah, and I, I was love. like, yeah, this is why. I don't design covers. Exactly. This is why we have artists for this. It's truly, they were brilliant. And yeah. they, I would not have, I would not have gone in that direction. And it's the exact right direction. Yeah. It's so symbolic. And they, of the all story. of your books have these incredible colors. Like they just yeah. do such a fun job. So I do love this cover. And I got a coaster out of this, you guys. So <laughs> you can be really jealous. But I bet if you follow Heather, on all her mm -hmm. socials and beg and plead, you too could get a coaster. And oh, I have a, extra. It has a cocktail on the back, which we can go cocktail. and make later. So um, that is super exciting. Well, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. So we're at Thriller Fest, which means, I mean, I don't know about Heather because she seems more alert. I'm like, it's 11 o'clock in the morning and I'm still like sort of waking up. <laughs> you know, my, I'm, I'm always, it feels like I'm always tired yeah. because, well, because I'm always tired, but, but I'm like, my body adjusts pretty quickly to the three hour time difference yeah. because I woke up this morning at the normal time and it's like, okay, it's six 30. That's three 30 back home. Yes. I've only been here like 36 hours. That's impressive. So, yeah. but I'm, but I'm tired, Yeah. but I'm always tired. Well, and also it's totally like, we're yeah. not used to doing this much talking, right. You know, I mean, at least not. I assume we're not because I'm not at home. No, so yeah, no. Um, so anyway, well, this has been so much fun to talk about. Uh, Before she finds me, which is out June remind 27th. Me, 27th. And I think our show. Do I have this? Yeah, our show is coming out on June 27th. So as Woo! you are listening to this, Before She Finds Me is out in the world today. Go grab your copy. And um, thank you for joining me, yeah, Heather. Thank you for having me. This has been Killer Women with Heather Chavez, and we will see you next time. Bye.